Now, in order to talk about the inflation options and settings, we're going to go back to our first drawn geometry, which was the cube. Because we cannot create automatic inflation option for geometries which have mapped or quadrilaterals mesh, we have to first change the mesh created over this geometry to tetrahedrons. To do that, we just right click on mesh, go over insert, and then select methods. After clicking on that command, on the loadout side of the software window, in front of the geometry, we have to select the geometry of our cube. Then in front of the method, select tetrahedrons and simply click on generate button, so that unstructured mesh is created over our geometry. Now, about creating inflation mesh inside your geometry, you either can define and add inflation mesh by using local commands, or you can enable this option using the global setting. In order to use the global setting, we have to expand the inflation section, and then in front of the use automatic inflation, we have to change that option from non to program control, so that automatic inflation meshing is done each time we create a mesh over our geometry. Now after changing the automatic inflation from non to program controlled, under the inflation option you can select between different choices. We're going to select each one to see how they can help us create inflation mesh over our geometry. If you select total thickness for example, underneath it you will find some different options from number of layers to growth rate and maximum thickness. The number of layers, as its name says, is the maximum number of layers of inflation layers that you want to generate inside your geometry. Also, as for the growth rate, the growth rate is the ratio of, of the changes of height of the second layer to the first layer or the third layer to the second layer and so on. As for the maximum thickness, it defines the thickness of the whole inflation layers, which in this study you can see we have five layers of inflation mesh. Now, for instance, we enter the value of maximum thickness equal to 10 centimeters or 0.1 meter, and then we click on Generate button. Now, after clicking on Generate button, you will see that there are no changes over the appearance of your geometry, which is due to the fact that inflation mesh is created inside your geometry. Now, in order to see inside the geometry, you can use the Section Plane option. After selecting this command, you can draw a line over your geometry, which will divide it into two sections. And therefore, you can see within your geometry. As you can see here, the inflation mesh has been generated inside your geometry, and it has five layers with a total thickness of 10 centimeters. Now in case you had problem viewing your mesh details like this as you can see in this slide, you have to select on section plane next to the details and then click on section plane and select over the icon which has the diamond shape. Now the next option is the first layer thickness where you have to define the thickness of the first layer of your inflation mesh. For example, we enter the value of 5 cm for the first layer height. The rest options shown here like maximum layers and growth rate are as same as the previous one. However, we can change for example the maximum layer from 5 to 7 and see its effect. We also change the value for growth rate shown here from 1.2 to 1.5 and then simply click on generate button. Now as you can see here, 7 layer of inflation mesh has been created with a growth rate of 1.5. Also you have defined the first layer thickness equal to 5 cm.
The third option in front of the inflation option is the smooth transition. This option is selected by default and when you select it, you have to enter the values for growth rate and maximum layers. Also, you have to enter a value for the transition ratio. The transition ratio is is the ratio of the height of the last tetrahedral mesh after the inflation mesh to the height of the last layer of inflation mesh inside the inflation layer. For example, if we change the value of transition ratio to 0.1, you will see that the height of the last layer of inflation mesh will decrease in comparison with the height of the tetrahedral mesh connected to it. The other option is the first aspect ratio where you have to define the ratio of the length of the first layer inflation mesh to its height. For example, if we change the first aspect ratio value to 2, the length of the baseline of the inflation mesh will have a ratio 2 times bigger than its height. Or for example, if you change it to 8, you will see the difference between the a state where we have defined the first aspect ratio value to 2 and the state where we have defined its value to 8. Now the final option is the last aspect ratio which is essentially the same as the first aspect ratio option with the difference that you have to enter and set the settings for the last layer of inflation mesh here instead of the first layer. Uh, there is also another difference with the first aspect ratio option which is that you have to enter the value for first layer height instead of growth rate. You can see here that we have entered the value of 5 cm and we are going to change the value of aspect ratio to see its effect on the inflation mesh. For example, if we enter the value of aspect ratio equal to 1, we want the last layer inflation mesh to have equal value for its base and its height. However, when you click on generate button and when the mesh is generated, you can see that the quality of the generated mesh for the inflation layer is not in such good a state when you define the aspect ratio equal to 1. Therefore, we're going to change this value to obtain a better mesh with a higher quality. For example, when you set the value of aspect ratio for the last layer of inflation mesh equal to 7, you can see that a better mesh with a higher quality is generated, and the ratio of the base of the last layer of inflation mesh to its height is equal to 7.